So in terms of an example, let's talk about the a very common interference anti-reflective coding. Normally, because it is wavelength dependent, we normally target the middle of the visible spectrum so that we can kind of get the effect on average for the entire spectrum. Um, so it works ideally at, we're going to center at green, green light, um, whose wavelength in air is 550 nanometer. By depositing a layer of MGF2, which has a certain index, on glass, which has a certain other index. And we're asking, what is the thickness we need to achieve the anti-reflective effect? Let's draw this out. Uh, okay, we have a piece of glass here. N is equal to 1.52 down here. Then we deposit some material on top. And the N is 1.38 in here. And this is going to have to work in air. So the N out here is 1. Green light comes in. It bounces off. We have our first beam. Bounce off the second thing, second beam. We're talking about um, anti-reflection, so we want destructive. So that's our pi plus or minus pi plus or minus 3 pi plus or minus 5 pi type deal. And we want to figure out the total phase, we have to first of all treat and make sure the reflection at each point do we get a phase shift from for number one theta sorry phi one here that's going to equal to pi because you have you're going from n of one to n of one point three eight low to high pi same thing over here theta two one point three eight to one point five two so that's also low to high pi. Therefore, the entire delta phi going on here is k delta x plus pi minus pi, which works out to be zero. And k here, of course, is not just your simple k. It's going to be 2 pi divided by lambda naught times the index of reflection of the thin film itself because that's the part once again that the extra path was taken over so that goes in there and delta x is going to be two times the thickness which is what we're looking for so the minimum we can get for destructive is then we'll put in pi over here that's the smallest we can get not 3 pi not 5 pi Negative pi won't work, so it has to be pi. Rearranging, we get that cross cross t is equal to lambda naught over 2n. Um, you can think of it as the lambda in the medium, oops, over 4, because it's 2 times 2. So it's a quarter of the wavelength, but because it is corrected by the index of reflection, it can be even thinner. Working out that number, we get 99.6 nanometer. And that's the thickness of the anti-reflective coating to minimize the reflection at 550 nanometer. Now, we should be concerned though, because it is wavelength dependent, just because it's destructive at a certain wavelength, that should mean that it's constructive for other wavelengths. So we have to make sure that that's not gonna bother us either. So to make that constructive, let's use a slightly different color here. For constructive, um, we know the thickness this time. We want to know what lambda we're working with. But for constructive, we're going to use 2 pi. And so that's 2 pi and lambda naught to t. We already know t, cross cross. So the lambda naught here for constructive is 2nt, which works out to be 
275 nanometer in air. Now this kind of wavelength is deep within the purple towards the ultra ultraviolet where our eyes aren't that sensitive. So even though it is amplifying um, the reflection at that frequency, it doesn't hurt us as bad. We're minimizing the frequency where our eyes are sensitive in the greens and we're gonna have a little more reflection where our eyes isn't that sensitive and that's okay it achieves the effect of an anti-reflective coating so once again to recap as you do these problems usually it's a good idea to sketch out sketch it out to know which end goes where and then you can work out the phase shift for each individual reflection write out this equation don't forget your n and then work out the answer